Oftentimes in your Melodyne editing, you're going to come across certain anomalies, issues with audio that were really kind of unexpected. For example, in this audio we're looking at here, there's a digital blip here, somewhere after bar 65, right around B3. It's probably occurred because there was a crossfade that, was, that somebody forgot to create when they were comping these vocals, for example. Let's take a listen. Greater, there it is right there. You can scrub in Melodyne's timeline. I'm going to select right here at bar 65 and hold down my cursor and drag to the right. All right, let's zoom in on that problem area. Now, there's a lot of things you could do. For example, if this was your own production, of course, you have the freedom to do what you have to do, you know, to serve your intentions. If somebody gave you this file like this, you could reach out to the engineer or the producer and talk to them. Communication is never a bad thing. Or you could do your job and fix this and, you know, perhaps save somebody a little grief later on down the line. So the first thing we're going to do is notice that there is a separation. Where is Melodyne separating the audio? And that, that line is right here. This is where that blip is occurring between this area and right here. It's jumping quickly. I'm going to take my note separation tool, right click, go all the way down. It's my number six tool. And with this, not only can you create separations, you can click and drag this anywhere you want. I'm going to bring it to the right and say, you know what, right about there. Now, Melodyne has to put that click somewhere. So it's simply reattached it to the preceding audio there. Let's take a listen. Okay. Now, with that same tool, I'm going to create a separation. Let's say right about there. Now, this bit of audio is free game. It's fair game. I can delete it with my delete key. Simple as that. Let's hear this. Or one thing I like to do is grab my amplitude tool. Now, not only with this tool can you increase or decrease the volume of any little bit of selected audio or region of audio, you can mute audio by selecting it and double clicking. Melodyne leaves a hollowed out outline of that blip, letting me know that it's still there. It's just not going to play the sound back. Okay. So once you're sure you got, you got it working, then I feel more confident, obviously, committing my edits. Another thing I want to quickly point out here is I'm going to grab my note separation tool. And oftentimes, Melodyne might just clip a little bit of the breath here. Look at this following passage here. See this right here? I'm going to grab my note separation tool. I often like to give it a little bit more air before these notes. Of course, you want to audition it and see what it sounds like, but that's something I happen to notice. All right, now let's take a listen to our passage again. Uh, great. You may not need both these breaths, by the way, while we're here. So you can do, use the same applications, the amplitude tool, for example. Let's mute one of those breaths and hear what this sounds like. Uh, and there you have it. So we went in, identified a problem area. I assume it had to do with some crossfading. Perhaps somebody forgot to put a crossfade there. But with Melodyne, we went in there and during our work process, when you come across anomalies like this, you now know that you can use the same creative tools to do a more corrective application to circumstances like this. And not only did I do that, I used that same tool to do a little bit of something creative. And I, I said, maybe I didn't need those two breaths. It's not a little bit weird following each other. That might be something that also could have been corrected when compiling these vocals together in the first place. And things like this make Melodyne 4 even more versatile, powerful, and easy to use. Thanks for watching.